and welcome back to Scream With Me. My name is Rusty and this is my horror and metal music channel and uh, we just got through with Brightburn and now I want to move on to another of my top five killer kid movies of all time and that is 2015 a little movie came out a little bit independent horror movie came out called The Boy. Now, The Boy was released in 2015. It starred David Morris as John Henley, and his son, nine-year-old Ted Henley, is played by Jared Breeze, and the mysterious visitor is played by Rain Wilson, who plays William Colby. Now, as I said, this movie was uh, released in 2015. It was directed by Craig William McNeil. It was written by Craig William McNeil from a from a short story by Clay McLeod Champion called uh, The Henley Motel Murders or something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, and it stars, like I said, David Morris and Jared Breed and Rain Wilson. Now. This movie has uh, interesting producers. Elijah Wood is a producer of this movie, along with Rain Wilson, um, who produced this independent horror movie. And uh, all I can say is Anthony Perkins, eat your heart out uh, for a role like this. Um, because Norman Bates, this boy, the boy is going to give you a run for your money in every way imaginable and he ain't got no excuse unlike you know many of the horror movies uh, that revolve around psychopathy and sociopathy are usually there's reasons you know everybody's got reasons whether you believe you know whether you think they matter or not is irrelevant um, then there are those that seem to be born evil. They're just evil. And there's no rhyme or reason or what for is about it that you expect or that make any legitimate sense. This is one of those. Um, this movie is fantastic in every way, shape, or form. It is so unique in its exploration of uh, psycho a psychopath um, like I know they did the Bates Motel which tried to kind of uh, play with Norman Bates's teenage years um, but then again like I said you have actual abuse you have actual stuff going on this is a movie about a nine-year-old now nine-year-old Ted and his dad uh, John live in the family motel way out in the middle of nowhere which used to be a tourist attraction because of its mountain view that's the name of the motel the mountain view motel and people would drive all over and still do on occasion but it's not on the tourist map anymore so they live in this uh, financially troubled little motel just him and his son and the and the guests the, the occasional guests that come which are few and far between um, this kid, you know, at the beginning, uh, he seems very normal, you know, um, he goes and cleans up the front of the motel where the road is, uh, the occasional road kill because they're on a bad, they're on a bad winding mountainous curves. So, um, his dad allows him to go and kill road, you know, get road kill off the road and pays him an allowance for doing it and doing little odd jobs around the house. Now his dad is a little, um, he's a little sad, he's a little alky, but he seems to be very nice to the, to the boy. He loves the boy, he watches the boy. Um, there's no real problem, he's not abusive, he's not neglectful. Um, 
there is nothing like that going on in the entire movie, nor that there has there ever been. The only thing that's happened is that just like the boy who doesn't like being out here in the middle of nowhere, um, the mom abandoned them and took off. Um, obviously, she didn't care much for the boy. He thinks that that's the answer is to get to his mom, but she, you know it's not like they fought for custody or anything. She abandoned them. She didn't want to live this out-of-the-way motel life. So, you know, that's the setup. The cinematography in this movie is just absolutely phenomenal. I've never seen anyone be able to create such a mood and atmosphere with silence. The loneliness that you feel the isolation that you feel um, that the cinematography of this movie brings across is absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful cinematography. And you feel it. You can't help but feel uh, uneasy. You know, the lack of a soundtrack. Long, long periods of quiet. Quiet talking no background music, no anything like that. It's dead quiet out in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the kid may be bored and stuff like that, but the point that I'm making is there is absolutely nothing that would cause you, you know, criminal psychology-wise, there is absolutely nothing that has gone on or is going on in this kid's life, which is what this movie is about is trying to show that there are not answers always to why psychopaths come to be. We all know about Norman Bates, who, what, when, and where, and why. Uh, but here we're seeing a nine-year-old slowly become fascinated with his darkness and his evil. He is an evil little shit. And he is actually fascinated by it. He's fascinated with the roadkill. He's fascinated with being creepy. <laughs> He's a creepy little kid. And when the occasional guest does come in, um, he's very creepy. <laughs> I, I'll, I will tell you how and why here. Um, so... One of the things that he does to try to get more allowance is he goes and puts food in the road for animals to come to uh, so that they will get hit so that he can get an extra quarter for clearing up a piece of roadkill. That's the kind of mentality we're working here with. He doesn't really value life, if you know what I'm saying. So um, he goes and he sees a deer. So he goes and puts like the chicken feet out because his dad had told him not to leave the chicken feet out because the deers have been getting into it. So he goes out there in the road and puts deer, uh, chicken feet in the road. And you know why, because his dad had told him about the deer. And of course, this guy, William Colby, played by Rain Wilson, gets in a car wreck, hits the deer, and now the boy has company. And that's what this was about. Um, later in the movie, there is even a moment in which um, Rain Wilson's character, you know, says to the boy, if I didn't know better, I'd think you stranded me here on purpose. That's actually what he did. <laughs> so, um, that's where we meet Rain Wilson. He plays this drifter who was just driving through, who because of totaling his car and bashing his head, ends up staying at the motel. Now, uh, the boy becomes kind of like obsessed with him in a, in a kind of creepy way. And the boy does all kinds of creepy things. He loves to sneak into your, he watches you through the windows. And he sneaks in while you're asleep and stands over you. And, um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty creepy. And he's, he's, he's seems to be very, very smart and um, 
not OCD or anything, but very meticulous in his observations. And uh, so he's, like I said, he's kind of gets, gets kind of obsessed with the guest. He's the only guest there. A family does get tired on the road and show up and they come there. And it's a man and a woman and a little boy. And within a day, he tries to kill the little boy in the pool. Tries to drown him. And it's the pleasure on his face when they're playing. You know, they're holding each other under the water. And um, the pleasure on his face when he decides to keep that boy under the water is very, very creepy. Um, but the boy gets away and gets up. And the next night, he apologizes. Because he's went and sabotaged their car by pulling what people won't look for. If your car ever messes up, check your fuses and wires in the front before you start messing with the engine. But that's what he had done, is he had got into their car and during the night and had pulled out the fuses and uh, the fuse wire to strand them there so that he could have more people around. More people that he was trying to kill. <laughs> So, um, one of the bad things that the dad did, I think, was when that deer was killed by Rain Wilson's car, he strung it up and dressed it in front of the boy and had the boy help him, Ted, you know, had Ted help him. And, of course, the dad had no way of knowing this, but a little evil kid obsessed with death and killing Cutting a deer all up in front of him probably wasn't the wisest thing to do. It's, you know, but of course the dad had no way of knowing that. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a interesting scene. Um, we don't know much about Rain Wilson. Now, finally, the couple figures out what's wrong. They're there for about three days and they leave. So you, so you're left alone with just William Colby and the 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 family the boy and his dad now like I said he was kind of like creepily obsessed with this guy you know asking him questions and you could tell that there was something wrong with William Colby um, you just didn't really know what well you end up finding out that because um, you know the boy told him where they took the car and him and the boy went down there for him to retrieve a box so they were, the boy was acting very friendly with him. They were very friendly. Um, of course, Rain Wilson didn't know what the boy was doing at night, sneaking into his room, um, standing over him, wanting to kill him and stuff. But uh, you could tell that the boy, what seemed to be friendliness, was actually seduction. I don't mean erotic seduction. I mean seducing your prey getting your prey, finding out the weak points, um, and how to get your prey. And this is a fucking nine-year-old. Well, um, he ends up finding out that what's in the box is Rain Wilson's wife. She had been cremated, and her ashes were in a bag in the box. And when he explained that to the boy, he became, what do you think? He became obsessed with that bag of someone dead and turned into dust so he ends up stealing it and going and hiding it at that junkyard now during that scene where he hid it at the junkyard you seen him doing a lot of stuff and you didn't really understand what it was he was doing you know I'm like well, why is that you know why has he got this big hole He's got all, he's like putting all of these uh, automotive parts in it, especially the sharp, jaggy ones, you know. But um, he finds a tarp and he covers it up. And I'm like, he's setting the trap. He's like, he's able to like really think that way. And you find out what that's for later, of course. So, Rain Wilson, this is one of the creepiest scenes ever, and that is when he, they show him come sneak into Rain Wilson's room while he's asleep, 
and he just stands there over him and then he puts his hands on his nose and his mouth and he literally suffocates him until Rain Wilson you know coughs and rolls over and he jumps out of the way and you're like this kid is what you know what I mean he's fucking he's a total nutter you know is what you're thinking because he doesn't seem to be obsessed with anybody in any kind of normal nine-year-old way. He's obsessed with hurting them. And there's no reason, and that just drives you crazy. Because, you know, as human beings, we want there to be a reason. He was abused. He was mentally messed up. No, this kid just is fascinated with killing you. And there's no reason. Nothing has been done to him. He's been well cared for. He's loved. His daddy dotes on him. Um, sure, his mom abandoned him, but he don't even remember her because he was so young. So it, 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 it's, that's one of the things that I think they were addressing in this movie was that they were wanting you to have that frustration of going, there's nothing to blame it on. Okay, everybody wants to know the answer and everybody wants to blame it on something. And I think that it's an entry in the horror genre of the nature and versus nurture debate about evil people because this guy had this boy has had nothing done to him in any way other than he he, he just has his little temper outbursts, he has his little rage issues. And he just is obsessed with even people who are nice with him wanting to find some way to harm them, want to kill them, um, and enjoy it. So that scene where he tries to suffocate this grown-ass man while he's asleep was very, very creepy. So um, I think it's the next day. Yeah, it's the next day Rain Wilson realizes that boy has stole his wife. And he breaks into, you know, he breaks into the kid's room and is like, where is she? Where is she at? And the boy's like, she's down at, you know, down at the graveyard. I mean, down at the junkyard. So he gets Rain Wilson down there into the junkyard, takes him into the bus where he hit it, but then lets Rain Wilson go past the seat that he's got it hit in. And he gets it and he shows it to him gets a handful and throws it at Rain Wilson's face and makes Rain Wilson start chasing him. Where do you think he's chasing him to? He's chasing him to that fucking trap that he set. And sure enough, Rain Wilson, they, the last thing you see is Rain Wilson falling into that pit of shrapnel that had been covered over by a tarp by this little psycho. So you're like, wow. <laughs> now, the dad in financial trouble, like I said, he's a little alky, but not in a bad way, not in an abusive way. He's just, he's scared. They're going to lose the motel. He's got financial trouble. Well, he has made a deal with the local high school jock who has rented out the entire motel for the weekend after prom, the prom night. So now we know that um, Rain Wilson is gone. We assume he's dead. Um, and the kid is told about the prom. The people all show up. The kids all show up. They're total assholes, of course, as you would expect from high school prom goers. And um, the kid is, like, fascinated, but he stays away from them at first. But then he's got to go and mess with them. And um, one of them, you know, and they, they pick on him, but only a tiny bit. They, like, uh, try to get him to take a swig of whiskey, which he does, and it burns, and they laugh at him, and he runs off. He spends the rest of the night, though, like, sitting around in the back windows watching them. Total little creep. And like I said, he's not watching them for an erotic pervert way. He is watching them for the opportunity to do what he does, which is when one of the girls passes out drunk and her boyfriend leaves and goes back out to the party, he sneaks in there not to get a peek, not to touch her, 
not to grope her or, or anything erotic. He wants to kill her. And he does the same trick that he did to Rain Wilson. And I tell you what, dude, if that, if the, if her boyfriend had not walked back in that room, he would have killed her. Because she was completely passed out drunk. And although she was reacting and moving and struggling, she was blacked out cold. You know what I mean? And so they get in the room. They see him. Now, of course, the guy assumes that he was, like, messing with her in the other way. A nine-year-old, come on. But they grab him, they throw him outside, and they beat the shit out of him. I mean, this is a nine-year-old kid, and these are fucking 17, 18-year-old guys. And a couple of them, they pour alcohol over him, they kick him. I'm talking adult kicks. They... I, I, like when they first came out of that room I don't know what kind of stunt double they used but when they first came out of that room and he threw that boy across the yard that was one shot they showed him bam that was like I was like oh shit I hope he didn't get hurt when they did that I don't know how they accomplished that particular scene <laughs> you know but that was fucked up so they beat the hell out of him and he ends up uh, crawling to his daddy now his daddy's drunk his daddy's been shit on by these high schoolers um, he's worried and there he sees his son beat you know beat up bruised you could tell he was hurt um, and the dad grabs a hold of him you know and it's like oh my god what have they done to you what have they done to you and stuff like that and then he realizes though you went down there and screwed with them some way or another. Of course, he didn't know the real reason. But he's like, I told you to please stay in your room and leave people alone. And that pissed the boy off. And he ran off. And his dad was so drunk, he couldn't even go after him. So I guess he just kind of like fell back down on the floor. Well, the boy goes, takes a shower. And you can see it in his evil little face. You're like some shit's fisting to go down. <laughs> I don't know what this little evil shit's going to do, but he's going to do something. So he um, lays there after taking the shower. He lays there in the bed with that guy's wife's ashes in the box on his chest. So he's laying there like looking up and thinking while he's hearing all of the partying and revelry and you then get to find out what happened to Rain Wilson because that's what he's thinking about and it's showing Rain Wilson impaled with those metal rods and stuff from that trap and the boy is standing there looking down at him and Rain Wilson is looking at her gobbing up blood and stuff like that and dying right in front of him and the boy actually has this serene look on his face and you're like well he liked that what the fuck's he pissing to do now because you know these people have pissed him off so when he hears everybody quieting down and he kind of knows that they've all drunk themselves into a stupor they're all passed out they're all you know stuff like that he gets up out of bed puts that woman's ashes all over his face puts on you know from that deer that his daddy had made him help him string up he puts this antler crown remember that that video Jeremy by Pearl Jam you know with him standing there with the flag and all like I'm finally somebody he did this with uh, those deer antler horns he made this crown so he puts on this crown. He puts this woman's ashes all over his face. Uh, Rain Wilson, of course, is dead down in the junkyard where he's got him hidden away. And he goes outside in his underwear, goes up and down the motel with padlocks, locking all of those teenagers. I think there was about 20. It was a healthy little crowd. It was the after party for prom there was about 20 
kids yeah about 20 21 kids they're all passed out in the in six different rooms he goes and padlocks every one of them then he goes and gets this big thing of gas and he puts it all over the doors and he sets them motherfuckers on fire he sets that motel on fire goes down to each door and lights it on fire then goes out see that that's him standing in front of the motel he goes out there and stands there and watches as this old rustic motel goes up in flames and what do you think happens I mean you know they may be drunk and passed out but when the flames start hitting them these kids freak out so he's standing out there in his underwear listening to them listening to 22 kids burned to death screaming and hollering can't get out and all he's got to say is when he's pretty sure everything is engulfed and the screaming is down down he, he said um, I hope you enjoyed your stay then he walks over to the main office where his dad is passed out or was passed out on the floor and it's now burning as well and he just stands out the door and looks in at his dad who is still alive enough to open his eyes and look at him and he just stares at him for a minute and then turns around and walks away and then boom we're at the next day you know that night of course the police the fire trucks all come and uh, the ambulance comes and they're all putting it out and by the next morning they've managed to get the fire out and they're taking off all these bodies and stuff like that and just like Brightburn which is kind of interesting the movie ends with him sitting in the back of an ambulance while the guy is um, doing that cut on his forehead you know and he's just staring at everything and the last thing he stares at is the chair where his dad used to sit all the time and you know and the 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 guy's like well you know do you have any you know I'm sorry about your dad and um, when's the last time you saw the guy in number two they're talking about Rain Wilson's character now remember what I said Rain Wilson's character we found out his wife was the ashes the boy had also found out from Rain Wilson that she had died in a fire now we found out from the sheriff who had been it was only about eight minutes of screen time the, or no maybe six or seven the whole movie but he was curious about this stranger that had stopped in town and he had ran his plates and we hear in this little moment that's very important when he was sitting in the car um, the sheriff was told that those plates had been ran and that it turns out that although this guy wasn't wanted this guy's wife was dead under suspicious circumstances that looked like arson because him and her had been charged with insurance fraud before they were fire starters him and his wife they had done several suspicious insurance claims involving fire the boy knew that so because like I said remember I told you he was obsessed with the man and he like hung out with him all the time and was digging information out of out of him now uh, so the man had told him that his wife had died in a fire and he couldn't get to her in time and that was all true but you kind of found out through the sheriff that pretty much what had happened was they tried to set a fire burn their house down or something to make another insurance claim that's the reason Rain Wilson's character was so devastated crying destroyed was because him and his wife tried another insurance fraud is what they did and she fucked up and died in it accidentally because he was a nice guy he was just obviously a fire starting criminal but um, he wasn't like a psycho or anything so he didn't kill his wife that's why he was so despondent and upset through the whole movie was because him and his wife were criminals they were insurance frauders 
who fucked up and she got killed trying to defraud. So now back to the ending. Back to the ending, we have the boy sitting in the thing. The sheriff walks up and says, I'm sorry about your dad. Have you seen this man from number two? Um, and that's when the boy says, A few hours ago, I saw him peeking in their windows. Which was bullshit, because the boy had killed him yesterday. So it's like, yeah, I saw him a couple hours ago peeking in their windows. So he should be somewhere around here. And um, then he told the sheriff, didn't his wife die in a fire? He told me his wife died in a fire. Which of course makes the sheriff go, this is some more insurance shit. This is some more murder. This guy, this little shit, this little nine-year-old boy put it directly into that cop's head that it was Rain Wilson's character who did it, who looks like he accidentally fell in a hole in the junkyard when they do find him, because the sheriff turns around and says, put out an all boys bulletin, let's search this area. Well, the junkyard's right down the road. They're gonna find him, and they're gonna find him dead in that hole where it looks like he accidentally fell in. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. The nine-year-old is a brilliant psychopath. <laughs> I mean, he literally is nine years old, and he plotted this whole shit to burn that shit down so that he could go find his mom in Florida. What the hell do you think is going to come her way when he gets there? The bitch didn't obviously didn't want him to begin with. She ain't never said nothing. She may not even be alive. She got... What is it? Okay, how do we even know about her? We know about her because she had sent a couple of postcards way back when she first left from Florida. That's it. They have no idea who she is, where she is, whether she's alive or dead. Um, she didn't want nothing to do with them, so I don't know where he thinks he's going. But um, that was his answer was I've got a mom in Florida so he thinks and the, the movie ends with him having convinced the sheriff in the most subtle psychological psychopathic way that Rain Wilson's character had killed just killed his dad and all of these kids I mean not one of them got out they didn't have time that place went up like a thatch house you know what I mean? In the middle of the desert? It went poof. And them kids were all wasted. They didn't even, they probably didn't even know what was going on until they themselves were on fire. Um, and like I said, he had all the doors padlocked. Locked them from the outside. So yeah. Before I go on any further, go on and on and on. That was 2015's the boy starring David Morse Jared Breeze is the little psycho and Rain Wilson lot of food for thought in this movie as well because they make very clear to you you know they they give you the information that you need I hate when movies don't give you the information that you need to come to your own conclusion this maybe gives you the all, all the information. You are very well aware of the relationship with his dad. You're very well aware of where his mom went and how and why. You are very well, because she didn't want them. She didn't want to live out there in the motel. She didn't want to raise him, and she didn't want to be with the dad no more. She didn't want that life. You are made very well aware that there has never been any kind of neglect abuse um, the dad is an alky a little bit but I think they only show him drunk like twice in the whole movie and that's only because he is so stressed out because the bank keeps calling you know saying uh, you need to make a payment a mortgage payment and he's worried about where him and his son are going to go and how can they keep this motel going uh, worried about them being on the street um, 
yeah so I think the point of this movie is to leave you going well shit I have no answers why is this little devil a little devil I and mean, it's like I mean this is the kind of kid you want to shade the back of his head and look for a 666 you know what I mean and there's no reason there's no criminal psychological reason to um, that people like to point to you know no starvation no neglect no abuse no emotional abuse no physical abuse the dad is real sweet to him through the whole movie um, there's no emotional abuse no uh, physical abuse uh, no kind of anything like that they just show you the portrait of a nine-year-old psychopath coming into his love of murder and death and killing and hurting and it's very very it's like I said this movie is in my top five along with Brightburn and little girl who lives down the lane and a few others I'll have to do a top ten like that one time but um, love this movie you can find it rent it or buy it uh, digitally because I'm once again gonna say this is an independent horror you know from the independent horror film community and um, please support independent horror films because I am so tired of mainstream bullshit um, but that's not original rehashes and crap like that but yeah so it's not that I hate them all I'll give me a good horror movie I'll love it even if it's mainstream but also I'm really keen on hunting down looking up and giving a chance to independent horror so give independent horror a chance you might find really good stuff out there that you've never heard about like this support independent horror movie come on if you're willing to throw down 60 bucks for some silly re-release of a movie you've got six copies of can't you go and spend 10 to 15 on an indie horror film blu-ray dvd check them out and all you people who use digital and stuff i'm sure you can find some place to buy it digitally but in any event support indie horror filmmaking and Love you, miss you, bye, and I will see you in the next video when I decide what it is I want to do. And um, love you, miss you, bye. Stay scary and keep screaming. It's good for your soul. Might not be good for your throat, but it's good for your soul. And also your rage. Just scream a couple of times. You'll feel better. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.